What's up guys, welcome back to welcome back to another video and in today's video We're gonna be trying to knock out some major issues with our E91 M3 now obviously um, From the outside it's looking like it's coming together But there's a lot of little things that's preventing this car from honestly being a functional daily driver. Did I just say daily driver? <laughs> I honestly think I'm gonna drive this thing everywhere. First thing being first is this sunroof. I don't know if you guys know, but I said early with the sunroof that it's kind of stuck in this position. It might be able to move back a little bit and forward a little bit, but when you try to have it in the closing position, it sits a little off. I will show you guys that in a little bit. And that issue is honestly gonna prevent us from taking this thing outside on any days that looks kind of sketchy, like it's gonna rain or something, because if water actually goes through, we have the headliner and everything else, the Alcatara is gonna get ruined, the whole interior is gonna get ruined, and we don't wanna risk any leaks, honestly, inside the car. These sunroofs are discontinued continued at BMW so I can't even order it if I really wanted to and unfortunately I don't even think the mechanisms themselves that are causing this issue are replaceable or at least have a part number so my goal is to remove both glass pieces and figure out what exactly is failing and if we can figure that out and we take it out and try to fix it ourselves or take it to some professional sunroof repair place and have them at least repair that specific mechanism that also being said that's not our only issue we're having with this car the other major issue we're having with this car to the point where I don't even trust taking this anywhere and parking it without like a jump pack in the trunk is the fact that if I leave it overnight, even after a full charge, a full trick or charge, it has a brand new BMW battery, it will literally drain the next morning. That is super unfortunate. Now, it could be something major. It could be something minor. I'm really hoping it's not the custom MBT Evo that we got installed into this car because if it is the MBT Evo, that's going to be an issue. It could also be the keyless entry that we retrofitted. Maybe we have some kind of short in the wiring. And honestly, we're not going to really know what it is until we actually start diagnosing it. So the easiest way to diagnose it is to literally leave both doors open we're gonna go ahead and pop the fuse door open and check every single fuse for power It shouldn't have any power after like I would say like 30 minutes of leaving it in this position I have the keys inside so they're nowhere near the car to give it any kind of signal or power And since both doors are already open It's gonna go to sleep So once it's asleep if there's any fuse with any power We know that is gonna be the issue We're gonna check what fuse that correlates to and then once we figure that out We can figure out what is going on and we can easily diagnose the specific issue that we actually have now Those are the two main Major issues that we're having with this car is preventing us honestly from taking it out I did mention something in the last video that we kind of have a major issue and that is actually gonna be the rear bumper getting it mounted that's the reason we haven't really mounted the muffler just yet because we kind of need to line up the bumper in the rear and at least kind of have the muffler line up with the rear bumper so this piece right over here um, if I bring it over here it doesn't exactly fit and reason being is the tail light is not gonna be the same tail light and obviously um, the quarter pan on all the, you know a bunch of other little issues I don't mind doing some trimming but after we figure out exactly Exactly the proper way of uh, getting this thing mounted now what I'm thinking we might actually have to do is actually get the OEM bracket to the E91 cut the top of this plastic weld the OEM bracket to here and then this section right over here in the front is what really makes it an M3 that that's what actually makes it a little bit wider so you can actually hold the bumper and uh, once we actually get the quarter pot on there it's gonna be all like you know in sync together but long story short we have the driver's side in really good shape no issues with it whatsoever the passenger side was the only thing that was really damaged other than the rear bumper passenger side bracket um, was also damaged so that is something we're gonna have to go ahead and order and then we're gonna have to cut up and try to fabricate it because obviously this being a wagon the most amount of modification we're gonna have to do is probably to that rear bumper once you actually get that rear bumper on there I don't see, I don't see how the quarter panel is gonna be too difficult but I really want to at least get that rear bumper on this so we can mount the exhaust and at least have a mechanically functioning perfect car so anyways um it has been about 15 20 minutes now. I'm gonna give it another 10 minutes just to be safe and then we're gonna go ahead and check in that fuse box to see what What's going on with their E91 M3? So unfortunately, I didn't find it. So uh, that might be a little bit of a bigger issue. I mean, not really a big, big issue. I mean, well, really considering what it is, it could be major. I mean, who knows? So we'll figure out that situation probably a little bit later. I'm gonna try to call my some of my electrician friends to see if they can help me diagnose this. If not, I'll probably take it to a local shop and have them diagnose this. It shouldn't cost too much for any professional. They should be able to find this issue pretty quickly. To actually fix the issue is a different story, but to actually find exactly what's wrong with, at least in the meantime, we can pull that fuse and uh, hopefully it's not something to do with the actual functionality of the car. If it's the iDrive system, we'll just pull it for now. If it's, you know, some module, we'll just pull it for now. 
now. Um, it honestly could be an airbag module because again, I started up the car today and it has an airbag light. So it's kind of weird why you just throw a random airbag light. So it could also be the airbag module throwing some faults, who knows? So I guess the next thing we're gonna go ahead and try to knock out is removing this top glass right over here and try to, you know, use this whole sunroof without this top piece. If we actually remove this top piece successfully and this whole operation works perfectly fine, then the motors have to do with the front. If it's still having issues, um, even with this complete glass removed, then it could have to do something with this rear glass. So again, first things first, let's just go ahead and just remove this front glass please. Basically doing this is pretty easy. As you guys can see, there's like this little uh, cover here. You just yank on this little cover, comes off. Come on, I don't wanna, oh yeah, I see. I don't wanna bend this because that would suck putting back in and I already bent it a little bit. So anyways, you need to remove this without bending it like I did and then uh, there's like one, two, three screws right up there. Same goes on the other side. Guys, we got the six screws out. Hopefully, this just comes out not actually just breaking it. Remember, I can't find parts for this anywhere. If we break anything, this would suck. So after playing around with this guys and I was moving it back and forth, back and forth, the only thing I'm really noticing is the fact that this one right here, yes, I see some cracks right here and uh, this thing has a lot more play in the other side. The other side actually has no play in this area and uh, this section right over here, which was my issue, my main issue, you guys can see like the hole right here. You can barely see the complete hole unless I bring it up this high. But if you look at like flush with the car, um, you can only see like half the hole on this side. And on this side, you guys can see the hole like no problem, which is basically my issue. My issue was on this side, the glass was sitting a little bit lower and uh, I'm not sure if that's the motor I'm not sure if that's the mechanism but I'm seeing a lot of little plastic pieces broken in there um, around that area and it looks like the actual general mechanism like the gears itself to move it back and forth work it's just this thing over here like I don't know if you guys can see there's a bunch of it's, it's all cracked up like this entire piece right here it's all cracked up I don't even know why it's plastic should have all been like metal in the first place uh, but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and try to figure out there's a part number for this I mean I guess I can see a number right over here and I can see a number like right over here so I'm going to look up those two numbers see if that's like one entire piece right there and see if there's like an easy way to remove this because uh, uh this doesn't look easy to be honest so unfortunately upon further investigation y'all uh <laughs> this ain't repairable <laughs> so I watched a, basically a video and they had to de-rivet the entire thing or move the rails and then those rails, I looked up the part numbers on eBay. Uh, no one sells used ones on eBay because I mean, you literally have to take apart a sunroof. Who does that? And uh, I mean, who takes apart an E91 sunroof on top of that? Like it's very uncommon. So the situation I'm currently dealing with right now is that I looked up the part numbers on BMW and uh, yeah, for both sides are honestly cracking. So I wouldn't want to just do one. I want to do both. And that's going to run me about $2,000 roughly. Probably with my discount, 1.5 or something like that, but 1.5 on a sunroof, that is absurd. I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just honestly reassemble it and try to adjust the glass to the point to where it will look off if it's all the way up, but it will look normal once it's flush against the car. And as long as water can't get in the car right now, I think that's my number one priority. So I'm gonna try to get that situated like that. And uh, yeah, guys, that is seriously unfortunate, like unheard of unfortunate. So yeah, this repair is gonna cost me more than how much I actually bought the wagon itself, which is kind of crazy. So yeah, for those of you guys who are looking out for a wagon, make sure to check one with a functional sunroof. I think it's the only thing you guys should care for. Who cares if the engine's any good? Who cares if the transmission's any good? All that stuff's coming out. But the only things that really matter is the tailgate in good condition and the sunroof in good condition because that's really all you really need. So that being said, that is my mistake. I'm gonna go ahead and try to find a sunroof for you know some other person parting it out. I mean, the sunroof on this car is literally from here all the way up here. So it's not something I can uh, you know get shipped out to me. It probably costs a fortune. So I'll probably just have to wait for someone locally to be parting on E91. Uh, you know sunroof and that is completely fine I'll just wait for that opportunity once that opportunity strikes if all you guys can do me a huge favor I'll make sure to give you guys a bonus as well if you guys have uh, somebody parting out an e91 wagon um, please hit them up see how much they want for the sunroof and if it's something reasonable hit me up uh, that would be absolutely amazing I'll make sure to you know give you guys some money for your time uh, but yeah without further ado I think I'm gonna go ahead and just start reassembling some stuff I'm gonna clean up the tracks a little more and then start reassembling both glass pieces and uh, hope to God I didn't mess up things any further
And about an hour later, guys, I think I messed up big time. So if my little crack in the window was a problem, <laughs> now we have absolutely no windows. And I guess I can show you guys the reason why. So if we're going to open up the door, let's go ahead and get the keys and just put it in the ignition real quick. I went ahead and zip tied the dome light up because uh, yeah, this is gonna be more of a permanent thing uh, for, a, for a little bit. I'm hoping not too long, but for a little bit. So if I go ahead and move the tracks forward, I'm gonna show you guys what happens. So coming up to the top, you guys are gonna see this track right over here. It's moving with that one right now, which is great. And that's all hand in dandy. But you guys can see this track's supposed to move with that track. They're both moving together. But recently, uh, what is that little plastic thing? This plastic thing snapped off this plastic thing. So if I go ahead and move it anything further than here, um, it doesn't move forward. So let me go ahead and try this one more time. So let's go backwards. So you can see both rails are moving back right now. I'm moving it back some more. And I'm gonna regret this because, uh, yeah, it took me forever to get this thing forward. I had people to pull on this one as this was going forward. So you guys can see what that one is right now. And then this one is right over here. So clicking the forward button, you guys are seeing this move. Okay, all right, well actually so far it's working. All right, well all of a sudden, all of a sudden guys, it wants to work. Hmm. Long story short, this bracket broke off this bracket. So no matter what, I don't know if you guys can see that right there, that snapped right off. No matter what, if I go ahead and put the pressure of the glass on there, it, it, it pretty much moves the glass this way. And I don't want to crack and shatter the glass and drop all the glass inwards. So unfortunately now I have no glass. Uh, this is my current situation, my current setup, and this absolutely sucks, I'm not gonna lie. So if I said I was in desperate need of a sunroof, now I'm saying this is number one priority. <laughs> I need to get a sunroof ASAP. I'm gonna do a lot of research trying to figure that out. Unfortunately, it is what it is. It is what it is. I did I did call up my boy Blake. He's an electrician, um, and I'm hoping he's gonna be able to help us diagnose the issue uh, with this thing. I mean, clearly we have a short with the car, so I'm hoping when he comes over, he's gonna help us sort the issue. He has his own channel. His name is Blake's Garage. Uh, so again, shout out to him for coming over right now. I'm actually going over to him right now to help him tow a car, uh, one of his projects to a shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and go help him do that right now. And then after that, once we drop off the car i'm gonna head back here and he's gonna meet me back over here and then he's gonna help me diagnose this bad boy so uh fingers crossed guys everything goes according to plan and fingers crossed at least we can fix one of our two major issues with this car so i'll see you guys once we actually head out all right guys all right i am so excited mainly because i just did some research and i found an e91 part out at rancher cordova pick and pull and had black and tears so there is a chance there is a chance that we might get a full trunk like lining and everything in black, which is super expensive on eBay. Like everyone's charging like, like almost a G for all the black trunk lining. So if it's there tomorrow, I'm gonna go ahead and snag it all. I'm gonna go ahead and pick the sunroof off. I'm actually gonna pay my boy Erlan to come over and help me. I think actually he just wants to come help me, but I think I'm gonna give him a little something, something because if he can help me pull that sunroof down and it's perfect and we get the headliner too, because I might as well take everything that has to do with a wagon, I would be the happiest man in the world. So anyways, I'm gonna go help my friend right now with the whole tow situation. And and then, uh, yeah, I guess tomorrow morning, which I'm gonna make in this video, we're gonna head down to pick a pull and hope to God we can score a score of a lifetime. guys just got about to drop off the e30 then head to my place and guys we just made it back and uh you guys know the whole sunroof situation hopefully we'll get that stuff sorted tomorrow and you guys know the whole situation with uh the, the car constantly dying so uh the man the myth the legend <laughs> We're gonna attempt this. What's up, this. bro? What's up, man? I mean, bro, if you could find it, that'd be insane. If yeah. not, it's not the end of the world. But, bro, this thing is just so annoying when it dies every morning. So, I'll show you what I'm gonna attempt to do real quick, just so you guys can know. 200K on the voltmeter, voltmeter ohms, it's open, OL. That means it's an open circuit, not shorted together. See this, if we short the wires together, see how it goes 0.00, right? Yeah. It means it's direct short, okay? Okay. So, first thing I noticed, all right, we take this wire. We go from ground to ground, right? We should have chassis ground. Should be direct short, is a direct short. 
However, we go from here, from chassis ground to positive, it's also direct short. So that to me means there is a short. <laughs> oh, so that's genuinely how you find out? Yeah, so that means to me there's a short. So what we should be able to do is go over to the fuse block, hopefully. And what I'd like to do is just start yanking out fuses and see if it goes away. And once it goes away, Oh, set. so you leave this here and then you just pull out fuse by fuse until that goes to OL. That's my first idea, yes. <laughs> okay. If it works, yes. If not, no. We'll try. <laughs> well, we'll try. How you I'm not it, gonna so. say like this is gonna happen, but hey, you know. Fingers crossed. We'll try. So that being said, guys, this is gonna take a while. This is a very tedious process. We'll get back to you guys when we actually have uh, some answers. guys so like i said a lot of tedious stuff and uh we haven't 100 percent figured it out but yeah. we have a lead yeah we got a lead we figured out something that's not working that definitely needs to be addressed and hopefully it'll help the process so basically um what we came down to we realized the keyless entry is not working still and that's after doing the wiring and i mean the keyless entry works in the car you can start up the car without a key um but long story short uh the trunk also uh it doesn't like this rear glass piece doesn't want to open either so this and the keyless entry what does that correlate with i mean possibly the fact that the trunk is not actually like considering itself locked right it doesn't know that the trunk is closed or open in my opinion and yeah you guys said that you switched coding to actually switch yeah, the Yeah, so modules. when we switch the coding for like, you see guys, this button should actually open up this rear glass for those of you guys who don't know what wagons. Like wagons, honestly, it's so sick is when you click this button, this rear glass should open. But as a safety thing, if the chunks open, when you click this, it doesn't wanna open it, so it doesn't bash against uh, the roof right here. So long story short, when we change the coding, when you click this button, this rear glass actually open, which means that this is actually getting power but long story short, we coded it back. It still doesn't want to work. And I actually replaced this button too. So I know it's not the okay. button. So. Yeah, so I'm thinking that it's literally just, it does not know that it's closed. So either it's the wiring that got spliced in possibly off that trunk switch or maybe some could more be coding. something else. I don't know if there's like a little sensor anywhere else. I'm assuming it's that, but yeah, I think you might want to check pinouts on wiring diagrams between an E90 and an E91 M3. And look at wires and colors We're gonna and have that to sort compare of thing. Them. Yeah, it's one of those yeah. tedious things we're just gonna have to figure out. But definitely a lead, guys. And I think actually once we figure out a way that the car will recognize when the trunk is closed and open, it's gonna fix this rear glass situation, which is our only other issue. It's gonna fix our keyless entry, which is our last issue, which would be pretty sick. Yeah. Even so if you just drive it every six hours, you won't have a problem. Oh man, I'm not gonna wake up in the middle of the night. I'll <laughs> start my car so I it's not talk dead. To run. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, meantime, we have a disconnected. Shout out to Blake for coming yeah. out. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, again, Blake's got a, a channel. He's, I'm gonna link it down below. He actually helped me with the manual swap on my E36. For those of you guys who you know been recent, that's like this year, right? It was a year. I think it was like just a year ago. Now, Beginning of probably. 2022. Yeah. I don't know. It was him that instilled the confidence in me to actually build this. To thing, do this, so. I was like, more. All you gotta do, <laughs> we'll do this, and guess what? From then on. You'll, you'll tackle stuff and hey, what are you It's crazy, done? it's really what crazy. You like you, you gain a lot it. of confidence when you just like, just just do something. Like once you start something, you just gain the confidence. But yeah, anyways, uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this video, guys. Uh, so without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace, Peace out. Guys, we just... The rear bumper is pretty mint. All right, guys, we just pulled up to this pickup pool. I told you guys I need a sunroof. This sunroof is in absolutely mint condition. It has black interior, which is super crazy. And the reason I want a black interior is because these rear seats are already folding and they look super good as it is. We got the rear bench, we got the top bench. If you guys come around to the rear, the craziest part is that this actually has the black interior. So we got all the black plastics, we got all the black trunk. We're gonna actually have a black E91 trunk. So it looks like our sunroof failing uh, saved us a lot of money because because it found us this, which is just insane, guys. I'm super stoked. I can't express to you guys how excited I am. I've been searching for this. Um, this thing also has black trim. This is a beautiful wagon. I don't even know what it's doing here. I'm going crazy. Oh yeah, I need this door too. Amazing. <laughs> Look at this fitment on this door, guys. No accidents. Oh, oh my God, dude. Um, guys, we're gonna be spending at least $500. <laughs>
definitely well worth the 500 but we're gonna go ahead and get to work all right guys so moments later we got every trunk piece in black every trim piece in black we got the rear seats in black we got it right over here as well it's just absolutely insane to find all this stuff because i was doing research and i was gonna buy everything from germany um which would have cost me upwards of a thousand dollars just for the trunk section so i think getting out of here would be less than a hundred dollars again fingers crossed they also have a taillight sale so ten dollars on taillights i don't actually need this but i know people always need these so i'm gonna go ahead and take these as well um ten dollars a pop um because i'm taking it for such a good deal if any of you guys really need it let me know um sell to you for like either I'll, I'll break even on like i don't care if you guys really need it let me know otherwise i'm gonna put it up and try to make a small profit on them but yeah when you come into the interior uh erlan just taking out a few things <laughs> don't mind what he's doing we're gonna try to take off the headliner and then take that sunroof that is the main reason we're here and it worked out because we also need this door as well perfect door uh, getting our door fixed is gonna cost you probably at least a hundred dollars to fix all those dents and then my door has a gap issue this is a perfect black um and at the same time it's not gonna have any issues we don't have to do anything we could just repaint it. it's gonna be super easy um so we're just gonna take the whole door as it is guys check out this sunroof perfect shape <laughs> oh, i'm so stoked oh yeah the cute <laughs> But anyways, guys, we got that line right there. We just took off the door. I'm going to go ahead and go pay for that real quick. And then I'm going to come back and actually help Erlon get this bad boy out. All right, guys. So we just had a score of a lifetime. We're trying to figure out the best way to actually get this thing in the trunk without actually flexing it because this thing's super fragile. We got a bunch more things in the car. So we'll show you guys hopefully everything um, pretty soon here. But in the meantime, we just want to figure out a way to load this up properly. All right, guys. Just made it home. The sunroof is looking pretty good. We're going to go ahead and unload everything, make sure nothing gets damaged, and then uh, probably get something to eat because we're absolutely starving. All right, guys, so we just made it back. And actually, before we eat, I do need Erlon's help for one more thing. I mean, we got the sunroof out. I'll probably put that in a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in this video, maybe another video. Um, just because we got so much done in this video, and I want to get out a video for you guys as, as you know, just an update. Uh, but this door right over here, the gaps are pretty bad. Uh, we do have a lot of dings and stuff like that right over here in this section. Um, it's not lining up back here as well. I mean, obviously, we have the quarter panel damp, but it's just not sitting right. Now, I don't know if that's the actual hinges on the door because the door is damaged, or it's the actual hinges on the car which is going to kind of suck and that's going to be like a whole alignment thing um so long story short we're going to go ahead and install that new door no dings no nothing and i'm hoping it's going to honestly just just go perfectly and we're going to have no deads or scratches so it's going to be super easy to get fitted and painted but anyways um so without further ado let's just go ahead and unbolt this door and stop on the other one it should be very easy Guys, the fitment on this door came out so much better. Obviously, the quarter panel gap right here is not perfect, but we can go ahead and adjust the hinge when we actually slap on the new quarter panel. Uh, but for now, I'm super happy with this. And right now, everything's actually hooked up. So technically, I have some rear door speakers. This door car is in mint shape. I don't really need it though, but um, it's a plus. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and head out right now, feed the boy. We need to get some food because it's been a long day. And guys, this is the next day, and I'm actually here with my brother. What's going on? <laughs> a lot of you guys wanted to see him on the channel, so he's here to help me with the sunroof situation. So you guys saw yesterday, we got the new door installed onto the car. Um, the sunroof is just, yeah, I mean, it's just no no more sunroof. It's pretty much gone. I mean, it's, it's still there. We need to unbolt and take out the whole sunroof assembly, uh, but the glass and everything is missing. I'm actually going to be keeping those glasses, spare glass, because you never know. Anything could happen, and uh, I have them, because they're very, very, very rare to find. So that being said, we do have everything that we actually got for pickup. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys everything that we got. Obviously, we got the new door as well, but I'm going to go ahead and put all this kind of stuff in front of the car.
car. Uh, probably take a thumbnail for you guys. And at the same time, uh, just show you guys what we're gonna get done right now. So other than this door, that, like I said, we already put on the car. We got all this other stuff from Pick and Pull. I don't know if you guys know how hard it is to find the black carpet pieces. This is absolutely filthy. Somebody used it to get an engine out. Um, so yeah, that needs some serious deep cleaning. But considering this piece on eBay is about $200 and we got it for about $10, I'm very, very, very happy that we got it. And we got everything else that we need for the trunk to get this whole trunk assembly to be fully black. The one I had for this car was fully gray. This entire interior was gray. We got black carpets. Uh, we're going to be putting in the black rear seats. The nice thing about having these black rear seats as well and then using my gray ones is that the carpets on the trunk area is going to be matching as well. So our entire trunk section is going to be black. It's going to look so, so, so good. And that's actually not the reason I actually went to pick and pull though. I went to actually get a new sunroof because as you guys know, getting a sunroof for this car is almost like stup stupid rare. The fact that my local pick and pull had an E91 was just super, super, super exciting. And uh, not to mention the fact that it looks perfectly good. It looks like it's going to work great. Hopefully it works great, but it looks really good. Um, the fact that we saw black interior was an absolute plus. The fact that we actually saw all this stuff the, for the trunk lining was an absolute plus. And not to mention, obviously, having a good door was an absolute plus. So yeah, that was an absolute blessing. I think I spent about $200 for everything you guys see over here. All this stuff like online equates to like over a couple, like I want to say like five to $6,000, which is absolutely insane. All these black little pieces right over here on eBay, just like it's like $1,500. These rear seat sections are about $1,500 and that sunroof is not sold anywhere. I think the only one that ever sold on eBay that got shipped was like literally $2,000. So the stuff you guys see over here, just for the wagon stuff is very, very, very expensive. But without further ado guys, we're gonna go ahead and put all this stuff away. The primary focus is gonna be that sunroof. So to show you guys what we need to actually get pulled out, um, to remove this whole sunroof assembly, basically there's a bunch of screws that actually hold it from the sides and there's all these brackets that are in the way as well. So we do need to remove all those brackets. Um, so I'm the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is actually remove all the little plastic brackets and the metal brackets, see those ones right there. And then we can actually take out all the bolts for the sunroof. So we finally got the sunroof in the car and uh, first things first, it is flush. It is beyond flush on both sides, looking really, really, really good. That is the biggest concern for me because I just don't want water going inside the car. Now that we got pretty much everything on the car, I mean, technically we can go ahead and drive it in the rain. Shouldn't have any issues if I leave it out, uh, outside overnight and it, you know, like in the mornings it get like icy and cold and you know, you know, water, what is it called? Like when water, like in the mornings. Uh, I, I'm so Anyways, but like water builds up in the middle of the night. It's like all over your car when you wake up. I just don't want any water getting inside this car, period. So Con Condensation? Condensation. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So long story short, uh, now that we got that knocked out, uh, the moment of truth is, does it work? My biggest concern, honestly, is just making sure it seals. It does look like it seals. It does look like there's nothing actually mechanically wrong with it in terms of sealing up, which is like our biggest priority. But if it works, that's a win-win. So without further ado, first time testing it, fingers crossed. Put in the car in accessory mode, y'all. Oh. <laughs> I think plugging it in might help. <laughs> oh, shoot. All right, take two. Ready? Ready. All right, so sliding mechanism is working. Okay, okay, so the sliding mechanism works. Eureka! <laughs> so, so far, so good. I didn't hear that grinding sounds. Okay, that is. Uh, I don't know if it's supposed to stop. Oh, so it opens up like a normal sunroof. I didn't even get to experience this the first time because my sunroof was so messed up. <laughs> I never had a panoramic roof. So I guess when you click it once, it takes uh, the like the little lining part out first. And then when you click it again, it kind of gets it halfway. Let's go ahead and send it all the way to the back so we can just kind of make sure we lube it up. Oh, we need to clean this up some more. 
Nice. Bro, oh my That's god. That's good. That's good. That's so good. Okay. So now that that works also, we're just gonna clean it up, again, lube it up, and then after that, we're gonna actually try to see if it actually goes up in that one position that's super cool, uh, the drive-by position. So, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up and I'll get back to you on a little bit. Alright guys, so now the next step is it actually is so smooth. I'm not hearing any weird grinding or popping sounds. That is the biggest issue with our last thunder. And this one's installed now. Like this one's confirmed so far. It goes back, no issues. If I go ahead and go forward now, will we have any issues here? So like there's no pop oh see it stop oh maybe it's the mid position right yeah mid. so that's normal oh nice dude heck yeah that that, that is the cool boy position <laughs> heck a, yeah guys spoiler sunroof oh that's so guys it is so smooth like whoever the honestly had the car was mint that car was absolutely mint to pick up i wish i got to take that entire wagon heck yeah dude Oh my lord. All right guys, so uh, as of right now, we got the sunroof in, it is in working condition. One of our major issues with this car that's preventing us from honestly taking it anywhere um, uh, is that, because it's starting to rain now here in California, which is a blessing in itself, but uh, we don't want to flood damage our E91 M3 that we spent so much money and time on. So finally, finally, this thing is fully insulated at this point. Um, at this point, we're just gonna go ahead and reinsert the brackets that we've already installed before back into the wagon. Um, that's just gonna take up some more time, some more tedious stuff, but if you guys wanna support the channel, Channel, support the wagon build make sure you check out those license plates right down below i mean we got a bunch of merch as well but check out these plates guys we got the m life plates right on this car gloss black looks super cool remember to stay humble because end of the day we are blessed to drive these cars and uh yeah i love y'all so much remember to stay humble I'll see y'all in the next one peace out